Ooh, it's chilly up in here, folks. We are up in the peaks of Everest. Welcome to Reynoso Mountain, my very own mountain here, where I'm going to rank the top 28 players in world football so far this season. You could also consider this a Ballon d'Or race if you'd like, because it's essentially the same thing. I'm looking for the best performers that we've seen starting back in August 2023 up until now, February 2023. Salts, your thoughts on this idea? I love it. I just think it's going to be a little difficult. I'm really curious to see who you put on this mountain, simply because, I mean, you could have an argument to put the entire back line of Bayer Leverkusen <laughs> somewhere on this mountain, yeah. and I would entertain that argument, you know? I think this can get really tough, but at the end of the day, let's do our best and let's have some fun here. Yeah, and let me reiterate that point. This is tough to do. Yeah. This is so tough because I'm yeah. talking about all players in world football, <laughs> exactly. South America, North America, Europe. I was up tirelessly these past three nights researching, and even 30 minutes before the shoot, I had to switch out two players because... I actually ended up, you know, convincing myself that they deserve to be on this mountain. So in that sense, do have some sympathy here, but at the same time, realize that this right here is factual. This is nothing but facts. There's no discussing here. In my opinion, there's no debate. So let's get this thing going because I am excited. And I'm going to be very thorough with your choices here, not because I might disagree, but just because I don't want to leave any room for doubt on this yeah, mountain, bro. I yeah. want to cover every single rock. So yeah, let's get started. You already got me questioning, man. Should I have put more defenders on here? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I prioritize offensive players in these discussions. Would you even put a goalkeeper on here? I don't think I would. So if there is one, I mean, that also could already yes. be a point of contention. And so to get right to it, I think a big part of this is also realizing that there's so many fringe players, players that just slightly missed out because we're ranking the top 28. So we're going to take a look at some of the players, the eight players that I believe could potentially get in if they continue the pace throughout their season and just heighten that level a little bit more. And so to start, the names that missed out, Marcus Turam, Gabriel, Huming Sun, Rodrigo, Alvaro Morata, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Tony Kroos, and Leroy Sané. I think a lot of these guys are having Really impressive seasons. I mean, Marcus Turam, I think, has 10 goals, 7 assists so far. Playing second fiddle in Inter Milan's offense next to Lautaro Martinez. Playing a really good role this season. I think deserving of almost getting into the mountain. Gabriel, alongside Saliba, has been playing so, so good. Forming the best defense in the Premier League right now. Only allowing 22 goals. Hume Ming Sun, Asian Cup semifinals, 12 goals and 6 assists. Rodrigo, somewhat of a slow start this season with Vinny being out, but now starting to pick it up a little bit more. Morata, 13 goals so far this season having one of his better seasons overall in front of goal Trent Alexander-Arnold would probably be in the mountain but he's just been a little bit more injury prone this season mm -hmm. regardless when he has been healthy he's been so good Tony Kroos has an argument for being the best Madrid midfielder if you'd like and Leroy Sané I, would, I think what 8 assists 11 goals so far nearly 20 goal contributions for the second best team in Germany it's worth it's worth uh, highlighting so then uh, Olivier Giroud I was thinking I was thinking but to me AC Milan is just they're what, third place right now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're not in title contention yeah. whatsoever, but I mean, neither is Atletico. Yeah, yeah, that's true. No, it's, it's very true, but Giroud has, what, 11 goals, I believe, 12 goals. 12 goals, and 8 assists, 20 goal contributions. He's the definition of a veteran number nine. Doesn't do anything flashy, but he does exactly what he needs to do. Who would you replace him with? You would take out. You would take out. Would you put him on the mountain, or would you take out one of these? That's the thing. Mentions? Like I, now, now I'm really curious Think to see who's it, at the bottom of the mountain because Trump's had a great season, man. Uh, a, a, excellent inclusion into the team for Inter. By the way, he's been popping off at Munchen Gladbach for a couple years now, and it's been easy for him to go to Inter Milan because he fits. Honestly, he could play at any yeah, team impressed. and score ten goals, get around ten assists. Yeah. No matter in any league, he's just got that type of talent. Xiaomi Sun, 12 goals, 6 assists, 18 goal contributions. I think that makes a lot of sense. So who are I to replace? Is it Morata? You think his goals are a little overrated? Just right place, right time. But I would argue the same with Giroud. Well, that, 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 that's the tough thing is that Atletico is having a very offensively liberating season. Morata's a big reason of that because he's just he's putting in goals. Could be a little bit better. That's why he's not on the mountain. I like that. Again, Xiaomi Sun has been actually really good for Tottenham. 
Rodrigo's, you know, he's had what? His breakout year yeah. last year, and I think he's continued that. It would be harsh not to include him here. What? We can't have nine players here? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we could. Yeah, you're right. I don't know why I was thinking about replacing. We could very much add him in. No problem. It's just the yeah. guys on the fringe. So, yeah, add him to that pack. Add him to that group. Okay. Olivier Giroud. And, guys, in the comments, let us know who deserves to be an honorable mention. And I guess you'll find that out after we reveal the top of the mountain. So, let's get let's start climbing, bro. Let's start getting okay, our gear yeah, on. Let's yeah, start climbing let's a little go. bit. Let's get to the first tier of this mountain. Mountain. Let's see what is the seventh tier. Who gets in here? Seven players get in right away. Who are those guys? We have Federico Valverde, Saliba, Savio from Girona, Nathan Ake, Martin Odegaard, Bernardo Silva, and Ilkay Gundogan. If you don't mind, let me go through each one of these for the reason behind yeah, why no, I please. put them in here. Federico Valverde, I believe, is the best Real Madrid midfielder so far this season. When you look at just the number of games that he has started, he gets the most consistent starts. I think he's at 25 starts so far. Whereas like guys like Tony Kroos, you know, comes off the bench every now and then. Modric comes off the bench every now and then. Camavinga gets rotated a lot. For me, it's Valverde who is always there every single time for Real Madrid and is the standout midfielder with, I believe, a goal and four assists so far this season. Complete package, Valverde, for Real Madrid. He's box-to-box -box on the defensive end, but offensively, he's full of running, never gives up. I get, honestly, captain vibes from Valverde, yeah. as you just said. He's honestly the first choice in midfield if he's healthy, I think, right now under Ancelotti. So Valverde's had an excellent season, but he's been so consistent ever since he joined Madrid. And honestly, he's just getting slowly a little bit better, a little bit better every season. And he has really good offensive components to his game. And when you look at the rest of Madrid's uh, midfield so young yeah so you know obviously you have Cruz Modric towards the end of their career I like that Valverde is here it, make, it just makes sense yeah he deserves it and next up alongside him you have Saliba William Saliba who has two goals and an assist in 25 games and I actually didn't have him here in this tier I had him as an honorable mention 30 minutes before the shoot but when you really start to thinking about it and you look at the defensive numbers in the Premier League Arsenal has allowed the least amount of goals only 22 and Saliba has been in my opinion the better defender over Gabriel this season with the amount of starts he's had the impact that he has his heading ability I think he's been so good all around and just an absolute stalwart in that back line for Arsenal yeah, Saliba has to be on this mountain anywhere. I, I'd be fine if you put him. So yeah, Saliba's been excellent defensively for Arsenal this year. Savio, the future Manchester City winger who's already been signed to the club going into next season. Mm. Having an amazing season for Girona right now. Propelling them to second place in La Liga with five goals and seven assists in 24 games. I mean, he absolutely deserves to be on this hill because he has made a name for himself on the European stage at such a young age. Such a good winger. And I mean, bro, playing on the second best team in La Liga right now is no joke considering the the state of this Girona side, what the the money they had to spend, the role that they gave to him, he has stepped up immensely and he's guiding them to second place in La Liga. Amazing player, deserves to be on here. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say Savio has been like the hidden gem this year as far as like unlocked potential from unknown players in Europe. He's been fantastic for Girona. My only thing is, if you put Savio here, then I'm hoping you have Dovbeek somewhere on this mountain. Yeah. That's yeah, all I'm going to yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah, I guess imagine if I didn't. Imagine if I didn't. That'd be crazy. <laughs> imagine. I guess I'd be crazy, out. man. That'd be crazy. But then we move alongside to Nathan Ake. Because when you really think about it, let me ask you this, bro. Who do you think has been Manchester City's best defender this season? Be honest. Who do you think it's been? John Stones, Ruben Diaz, Kyle Walker, for example. Or is it Nathan Ake, who has just shown an incredible level of versatility, consistency, has gotten a couple goals this season so far, and has become one of Pep Guardiola's favorites in that back line at a center back position or a fullback position? This dude can do it all now, and he just seems so wildly comfortable now in this Manchester City defense that I think it's time we start giving him his praises, man, because I definitely oh, yeah. think he's elevated his game, and he's become their best defender so far. What I love about Nathan Ake is his reading of the game from a center back position, man. It's so fun to watch, too, because a traditional defender like Ruben Diaz and Manuel Akanji as mm -hmm. well, they're going to use their physical presence first when they go for a ball. But for Ake, it's about the mental aspect of the game, man. And it's so fun just to hone in on his game when Manchester City's playing because you can see him just looking left and right, scanning the entire pitch, looking at where the threat is coming from. And what he's so good at, bro, is intercepting, just getting to the ball first. And then, secondary, he uses his physicality. Ake is one of my favorite defenders to watch in general. 
So do you think there's another Manchester City defender that might be higher up here, or is this is this the best of the best? Um, I think you could put Ruben Diaz yeah. because he uses his physical presence first. He's not the most athletic. His speed, slightly deceptive, but he's not going to be the fastest center back out there. But Diaz, just he's so gritty, He's mm -hmm. he, and he's been so good for Manchester City for several years now. I'd say Diaz could be on this mountain as well. If he's not, I honestly wouldn't be too mad at that yeah. okay i think definitely deserves to be at least on the bottom of the mountain yeah, so keep watching to see if i put another manchester city defender up here next up arsenal's very own martin odegaard who is starting to pick up that momentum now man five goals and six assists in 22 premier league games so far two goals in the champions league as well he had an amazing season last year scoring 15 goals seven assists started off a little bit slower this year but if you're watching him recently he's got a little bit of that uh that instinct is back man that killer mindset lately when i've been seeing him on the ball bro he's been so dangerous and so scary and he's been part of the reason for why arsenal's been able to stay in the title race after a couple of disappointing matches he's just picked it up completely and i think he's starting to build himself as one of the better attacking midfielders once again going into the final part of this season yeah, Odegaard is is interesting because he's not going to get a lot of goals. He's also not going to get a lot of assists. But for Arsenal, especially last year, and as you said, he's picking it up more at the second half of this season, he is the glue for Arsenal's offense. He transports the ball from left to right. He has a free-roaming position. He can kind of go anywhere in that final third for Mikel Arteta. And then, of course, as you just said, he has the handles, the technique to find those little spaces, whether it's Martinelli, Trossard, or Saka that he's mm -hmm. feeding. Dude, mm -hmm. Odegaard's filthy on the ball. He's filthy. filthy, bro. Filthy, dirty, dirty player in the best of ways. And he's up alongside... Bernardo Silva, another filthy player who I almost didn't put on the mountain, but then I just couldn't look myself in the mirror by not doing that. Man, I really couldn't do that because he has had some wonder goals this season. Six goals and four assists in the Prem so far, and he just scored an absolute peach of a goal against Copenhagen this past week. He's been incredible for Manchester City and just, you know, playing a classic Bernardo Silva type role for the Manchester City side. But I think he's actually upped his level a little bit more this year in comparison to last year where he had lesser numbers at this point of the season. So I think he deserves to be here right, right on the seventh tier of the best players so far because his talent, his class is just too good, man. And when he's in form, he definitely is one of the best players on the ball. No, exactly. Silva is low-key underrated in that aspect because mm -hmm. you just don't hear a lot or of praise when it comes to Bernardo Silva's game. Yeah. But seriously, since he hit the scene with Monaco back in 2017, he has been one of the best wide midfielders on the ball. But that's why I like Silva's game because he's not a winger, but he's not a defensive midfielder. He's purely offensive, but the way he plays, it's but the way he plays, it's very silky. He's mm -hmm. just got that class, mm -hmm. that touch to him. So. Who does it remind you of? Just say it. It, <laughs> say what do you mean what do you it think it reminds you of a little of a little Lionel Messi type play a play and approach man I, no, that, that, a little bit of that vibe when he's on the ball absolutely and I get a lot of like Spanish influence from Bernardo Silva uh -huh. just the way that he emphasizes touch first pass but he's also so tricky he's so tricky on the ball and that's what makes him so effective if you have Silva on this mountain, though, you have to have Phil. I know Holland's on this mountain. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know yeah, Holland's yeah. on this mountain climb. somewhere. But uh, you have to have Phil Foden somewhere. That's my course, only course, stipulation. Right. Silva's on here. Phil Foden has to be somewhere here. Yeah, prepare to be shocked. But you got me thinking, bro. Yeah, like when I think about Bernardo Silva, if I didn't know where he was from, I would guess Spain, bro. Yeah, I love the way he plays. Bernardo Silva, Portuguese. Yeah. It's a little bizarre. That is weird, yeah. yeah. But the way he plays is like it's like 2010 Barca. Yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah. And the last player I have on this tier is actually Barca's very own Ilkay Gundogan, who I debated a lot in my head, specifically when it came to a Barcelona player getting here on this prestigious mountain because when you think about a team like Barcelona right now man they're they're they are struggling with mm -hmm. them being kicked out of the Copa del Rey they have a quarter they have a round of 16 matchup against Napoli but they're not really looking as the you know heavyweight favorites as they've been known to be and in La Liga they're what third place right now potentially getting in second with Girona losing this week right but still they haven't been the same old Barcelona side that we've known and they've been criticized a lot because a lot of these matches are not getting good results in and so I was really thinking about should I put a Barcelona player here for example example, Robert Lewandowski, if you've seen, hasn't been mentioned in the mm -hmm. honorable mentions or we haven't seen him so far. I don't think he gets on the list because he's been atrocious in moments despite having 12 goals this season. I don't think he's been such a well-esteemed player so far in the grand scope of Europe. But Ilkay Gundogan, 
when you look at his numbers, five goals and six assists in 25 games, Mm -hmm. three goals in the Champions League. And when you take into account that we've spoken for a while about this Barcelona team, about how misused Okai Gunnigan is in their system and in their offense, yet he's able to put up 11 goal contributions within the league for a guy in his position. I think, honestly, he's superseded what has been expected of him given the the responsibility he's been given with this Barcelona team and the players around him. I think he's been their best player at the end of the day. Yeah. And I think he's been obviously their best signing of the summer so far. So I'm going to put Gundogan in because he is such a class player having a great season for Manchester City just last year as well. But coming over to Barcelona and doing the same thing, just showing that class, that that ability on the ball, that, that smart IQ that he has. I think he's Barcelona's best player so far this season. And so he gets here on the seventh tier. I don't agree. Sorry, what the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) I don't disagree with your entire Gundogan assessment. For sure. Everything that you just said about him, the player, I completely agree with. My only qualm here, I don't want a Barca player anywhere near this mountain. Mm. I just don't want it. I'm Mm. sorry. 11 goal contributions is great, but you look at the numbers that he put it for Manchester City the last three seasons, it it is less, you know, just in general. Uh, and I don't know, given the way Barcelona are playing, if he's going to match what he had been doing for the last three seasons. And I just think, I, I just think there's another player that could have been there yeah. instead. Well, I'm I do, open to I that. I do think so. That's the only qualm I have on this entire bottom tier of the mountain is Ilkay Gundogan, a fantastic player, the reason why Manchester City won Premier League title after yeah, Premier League title and yeah. Champions League last year. Uh, so yeah, I'm not doubting his ability. I'm just saying this specific season, I think there have been better players that would deserve to be here. Okay, I'm, I'm, okay let, let's. And now obviously, I'm what's, what's dope see. about this is that it's February, right? And I want to update this as the months go oh, by. Okay, okay. Let's see. Let's see where he's at. Maybe he does a, a beautiful showing against Napoli in the round of 16, and he once again carries Barcelona. Like maybe something good happens here yeah. for Gundogan to prove his status. But on the flip side, maybe you're right, and Very maybe true. he just drops some quality. Let's move on. To tier number six, the mountain is getting tighter. It's getting more <laughs> tense. Who is able to climb up this mountain? Let's get to the sixth tier. Who do we have? All right, here we go. The six players that I have selected are Victor Boniface, Julian Alvarez, Cole Palmer, Van Dyke, Ollie Watkins, and Sergio Girassi, man, the Stuttgart player right now who's going crazy. Let's start with Victor Boniface, a man that I think absolutely deserves to be on this list because Mm -hmm. he has 17 goal contributions for Bayer Leverkusen in 16 matches, 10 goals, 7 assists. And what's crazy about him is that the last game that he played for Bayer Leverkusen was in December 20th, bro. He's been faced with a groin injury that is going to keep him out until early April, man. So he's completely not connected to the team anymore with this injury that he's had but he was so good to start the season that he deserves a spot on it right now a month from now he won't be on here because other players will surpass his numbers but what the impact that he's had for Bayer Leverkusen those first 16 matches in the league offensively having such a big responsibility and carrying them to that undefeated title has been absolutely huge and he has Bayer Leverkusen fans raving over his status after they acquired him from where was it exactly? Was you, was it a singular wise? Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's been a great player for him, and I think he 100% deserves to have this moment of being in the sixth tier of Reynosa Mountain. And next up, I have Julian Alvarez, the Manchester City player, who has eight goals and six assists in 24 games in the Premier League, and then four goals and one assist in the Champions League as well. Mm-hmm. I think he's just continued rising oh, his yeah. position and his status with the Manchester City side, scoring once again beautiful, beautiful goals, very clinical, important moments for this team and I mean that trajectory that he's on he's just continued it bro he really has and the numbers that he has now are better than what he has last year so yeah. he's looking really good and I think I mean I, th- I can't deny him like he has to be on this mountain and he has to be in the sixth tier for me yeah and he's really showed his versatility this year last year he was so successful as an impact sub mm-hmm. maybe joining Holland in attack when City needed a goal or just replacing him for rotation purposes but Alvarez this year kind of was the replacement for the injured Kevin De Bruyne playing underneath Holland in a more creative role, but still having that striker know-how to get into the box and finish. So Alvarez is honestly just one of the better, more versatile forwards in general in Europe. So yeah, this makes sense for Alvarez yeah, for to be real, here. Six assists is a lot, man. Yeah, yeah for a striker, a lot, like, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's pretty really, great. Really, really good. And he's paired up alongside Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer. Cole Palmer. I think this will be a very 
controversial one here because he is sitting on 10 goals and six assists for definitely the worst team here on the mountain, Chelsea, who is in 10th place in the Premier League right now. But he himself, Cole Palmer, has been having an incredible season coming from Manchester City and I think, in my opinion, proving to be the best Chelsea player so far this season. Mm -hmm. I think Conor Gallagher, maybe Enzo's the other one name you could throw at me as potentially the best Chelsea player. But for me, it's Cole Palmer because when you play against him, when you see him on the pitch, there's actually a little bit of fear that he that he imposes onto the upon the opposing teams routinely, man. I mean, 10 goals in the Prem is nothing to joke about. But then he also has the playmaker, creative ability to get six assists as well. The best player for Chelsea so far. And honestly, a standout for me. I'm putting him in. You know, it's kind of crazy about Cole Palmer because at the beginning of the season, we had this debate of outside Jude Bellingham, who is the next best 20, 20 year old midfielder. And we had mentioned Pedri, Gavi, uh, Jamal Musiala. Yeah. Honestly, I think Cole Palmer has been the best one out of all those three this season specifically. Even Musiala, your boy? Even Musiala, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Musiala's shown to be slightly more one dimensional than I thought he was going to be. Whereas Cole Palmer, I think, actually has more room to grow in a lot of different aspects because he's shown to be a, a little bit more of a complete player actually yeah. from an attacking perspective and a midfield position. They both honestly play very similar positions, Musiala and Cole Palmer, but Palmer just seems to do a little bit more for Chelsea. Yeah, Chelsea as a team obviously yeah. has been struggling, but I think Palmer specifically, just from his performances, he's shown to be an insanely good prospect, 20, 21 years old. Yeah, it's, a, it's incredible. And what I love about him is that he's actually proven with uh, how he scored in the final for Manchester City of, what, like the Super Cup, I believe? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then getting sent over to Chelsea, plays against Manchester City, one of the best teams in the world, and he has an absolute beautiful game, man. And some of these goals, some of these highlights that I'm, I'm seeing from Palmer are actually really impressive, man. He's scoring some bangers out there. And just that aura that he has, man. I, I, I really think he is shaping himself out to be one of the best young prospects in world football. And he's English, man. Cole Palmer right there. Yeah, dude. I have Van Dyke on this tier. Virgil Van Dyke, Liverpool's legend of a defender, scoring a goal and two assists so far in this Premier League season and allowing the second lowest goals conceded right below Arsenal's 22. Liverpool has only allowed 24. I mean, he has to be put in here. I think he has to. He's having a vintage Van Dyke season, going back to just his incredible self, so hard to dribble by, so physical, so strong, and such a leader in the back line. What can you say about Van Dyke that hasn't been said already? Exactly. He's just such an incredible defender, and he's one of the few that makes it this high up in this mountain. Yeah, after a weird season last year, in general, most Liverpool players had a weird season. Van Dyke did too, but he's back. He's fully back. And uh, I know he's going to be on here too, but Mohamed Salah also is completely back to form. So, And it's, bo it's boating really well for Liverpool because they're so they, right there at the top of the table. Yeah, yeah lowest, second lowest goals conceded, but then they're the top team in the Prem. Yeah. That's why he's up here, man. Ali Watkins right next to him. This is a player that I almost forgot to put in, man. I almost forgot ah. to put him in, and I had to quickly fix the graphic because... His numbers are ridiculous. They're insane, dude. They're insane. They're insane. 13 goals and 10 assists. He might be the only player with a double-double so far he's, in all of the Top 5 leagues, right? He's the only player. That's yep. unreal, man. He's I can't believe I almost double -double. forgot about him, dude. I almost forgot him. And he probably has an argument to be higher up, but yeah. he is guiding this Aston Villa offense to fourth place in the Premier League right now. At one point, they were considered contenders, but they've had a uh, a lackluster uh, slim of results here. Regardless, They're Aston close. Villa... Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I just want to say Villa, Villa's closer to Liverpool than Barcelona is to Madrid. I just want okay. to put that out there. Okay. All right, fair enough. Talk your shit, man. Talk your <laughs> shit. 13 goals and 10 assists. I mean, that's undeniable to me. He's been huge and he deserves to be here. And then lastly, to finish off this tier, we have Sergio Girassi. 18 goals and one assist in 16 games for one of the you know weaker teams you could say in this whole mountain, Stuttgart. Who at mm -hmm. one point was battling relegation last year, now finds themselves in third place in the Bundesliga, but it's behind Garassi, man. Dude, 18 goals is ridiculous. It's insane, Holland, man. Harry Kane-like numbers yes, in the Bundesliga. Absolutely. And you look last year, he played 22 games in the Bundesliga for Stuttgart. He scored 11. That's a 50% goal-scoring ratio, and he's completely knocking already an insane percentage out of the park this season. For Girassi, man, I, I'm obviously so impressed he has 
excellent finishing ability. I mean, but so so do a lot of these guys. I mean, Alvarez, Watkins, Boniface. It's yeah. pretty ridiculous. This is a hell of a tier. I think you got it pretty much spot on. For Girasi, for me, it's like, dude, where's he gonna go after this season? Oh, like, yeah. I'm I'm scared if he goes to Bayern. I'd hate that. Uh, it'd be cool if you went to Leverkusen. It'd be even cooler if you got out of Germany yeah. and went to like a big club, maybe in Spain, Italy, or England. But he has so much potential, and I'm really curious to see where Girassi's career goes after this incredible season. That's the thing, bro. These goals aren't flukes. You look at his highlight yeah, reel, it's ridiculous. Yeah. He's scoring some actually really good goals and important goals for Stuttgart. What a player, man. Let's go on to the fifth tier. It's getting it's getting colder, Brant, man. The higher we get up there, the more beautiful the view is, but it gets a lot colder and it's a lot tougher mm-hmm. to see more people up here. So let's go up top to see who are the five players selected for the fifth tier. Fifth tier, we have Vinicius Jr., Declan Rice, Florian Wirtz, Artem Dovbik, and Alejandro Grimaldo, man. This is who I've selected as the fifth tier. Let's go through each one of these. Vinny Jr. sitting on seven goals and four assists in 16 games so far. I think what has been so impressive about Vinny Jr. so far this season is the fact that he was he was out for half of November yeah. and then all of December mm-hmm. and is still putting up this many goals and assist contributions while, while clearly being one of Real Madrid's best offensive talents. Every game that he's in, bro, like the opposing defense is always so, so aware of his presence, oh, always yeah, just man. trying to slow him down because so many goal scoring opportunities come from Vinny Jr. Two goals and two assists in the Champions League as well. Slow start to the season, but he's going to start ramping that up as we get into the important stages of the, of the season. Absolutely. There's no doubt. Vinicius is one of the best dribble penetrators in the world. And no matter what defense he plays, he's always going to get through at least one time. And you can't really say that about most wingers in the world, but yeah. Vinicius can do it. He's Real Madrid's biggest threat off the dribble by far. It's not even close. Sure, his numbers aren't like insane as you'd like them to be, but as you said, he hasn't played as many games as the rest of Real Madrid, but he's already still pretty close to the numbers that he usually gets. So yeah. imagine if yeah. he has had played every single game. Vinicius is just an incredible, incredible talent. Yeah. Declan Rice is up next as my selection with four goals and four assists in 25 games in the Premier league one assist in the champions league as well and he's one of two defensive midfielders that gets selected to be on the mountain he's been immense a hundred million dollars signing for uh arsenal but literally nobody has questioned it because his talent his ability on the ball his defensive attributes are just so good and so positive that it shows itself in these arsenal matches he completely revived that midfield for them and he's just been so good he's been so good so i put him in oh yeah i mean even before the season started it was clear that declan rice to arsenal was probably one of the best transfers like in a long time for arsenal and just honestly across the premier league in general a hundred million dollars but i think every penny or every pence whatever the hell they call it over there <laughs> has been completely worth it Declan rice is one of the best defensive midfielders not just in england but in the world box to box if you need him to be but not only that like he can get into the box too and just impose himself physically but where he really thrives is those ball interceptions man in the middle of the pitch he's like Nathan Ake but in the tighter section on the pitch right in that center and his ability to just read where the threat is and always cut it out that's where his play becomes completely priceless man you just can't you can't teach what Declan mm-hmm. Rice does on the pitch. One of the best midfielders out there. Oh, 100%, man. I agree with you. And next up is Florian Wirtz, one of two Bayer Leverkusen players that are on this tier. That's how good they've been this year, man. Undefeated. Like, when you think about the yeah. role these players play for their team, like, they've all they've, they've all gone through losses, though. Like, they've all had their off games. These players have been so perfect that they haven't lost a single game this entire season. Florian Wirtz with five goals and nine assists in the mm-hmm. Bundesliga so far. Two goals and four assists in the Europa League as well. He has been such a key contributor to Bayer Leverkusen's offense. The most creative player for them, for sure. And just such an important part of this Bayer Leverkusen engine that Xabi Alonso has put into place, man. I've been so impressed with him as he just continues to rise as one of the best young talents in world football. And he's having yet again another good season. That's the thing. And it, this goes back to my point of, you know, there's Gavi, Pedri, Musiala before the season. But at the end of the season, it has to be Palmer and Florian Wirtz. Mm. Wirtz is like, what, 20? Yeah, 20, he's 21. He's so young. But he's really hit the scene. I, I've seen him play before in, uh, seasons yeah. prior. But I've never really seen him come to fruition like he has for Bayer Leverkusen yeah. this season. Absolutely phenomenal. His numbers are 
excellent. Florian inverts, this just makes sense. It just makes sense. And I think another one that just makes sense yeah. is the presence of Artim Dovbeck yeah. here, man. Come on, man. Se second place in La Liga thanks to his offensive prowess. 14 goals, 5 assists. Yep. 19 goal contributions in 22 matches and guiding Girona to their incredible run so far in La Liga. This is their best offensive player and he's doing so well this season. Artem, welcome to the mountain. Absolute success. Just being so physical in the box but honestly it's not it's really not his physical presence it's his ability to finish dude like he doesn't second guess anything and he's putting away pretty much every other opportunity that he gets and of course Girona have such a really good system of moving the ball really quickly and finding Dobik in the box it has worked so brilliantly so yeah Dobik has been one of the has been one of the better traditional number nines yeah, this season 100 percent, dude but what a yeah what a rise this year though I mean <laughs> no. this, is, this is un unforeseen <laughs> man even if he was really good leading up to the season like the numbers he's putting up are ridiculous and you can say the same thing for Alejandro Guimaldo you could eight this goals nine assists more than Florian Verts in a completely different role a role that emphasizes working as an attacking winger and extra winger but then going back and defending as well he has done it all for this Bayer Leverkusen team once again I reiterate eight goals nine assists in 22 games is unheard yeah. of dude That's for crazy. a player in this position and then two goals in the Europa League as well and then you can add on top of that the fact that he is undefeated too this is crazy man this is one of the craziest ones and I, I considered him putting up higher in this mountain but he could he could he, he still can this season yeah. man if they continue this pace that they're at as a team and him solely as an individual he could find himself at the very top of this mountain if he'd like with this magical season that the Spaniard is having dude it's ridiculous from a left back position scoring as many goals as he have it's unheard of like mm -hmm. I, it's kind of disgusting how good <laughs> his goal scoring rate is right now for Bayer Leverkusen uh, you just don't see it I'm sorry, like, I don't care. Like, Dani Carvajal never reached numbers like that. Like, yeah. the, what, eight goals, you said? Eight goals, nine assists. Yeah, eight yeah. goals. That's insane, yeah. man. Uh, so, yeah, Grimaldo could have been higher. I wouldn't have been mad, but third tier, really, really excellent job from Grimaldo yes. this season. And now this is where it gets really exciting because now we're only going to discuss four players in that fourth tier as we get closer and closer to the top. So I'm getting giddy just thinking about it. Let's see who the four players are up next. Here we go. We have your very own Antoine Griezmann. Greasy, baby. Bukayo Saka. Yeah. Rodri and Holland. Dude, these names are crazy. These are these are heavyweight names now. We're starting to enter a very a very strong category of footballers here. Starting with Antoine Griezmann. I'll let you speak for this one. I mean, all you have to do is just play a compilation of everything that I've said over <laughs> Antoine Griezmann on this channel for the last 2 years, man. I mean, what can I say? The best player in his central attacking midfield position. He is the reason why Atletico have scored as many goals as they have this season. They did it back in 2016, and when he joined the team back then in the mid-2010s, Simeone understands who Antoine Griezmann is mm -hmm. fully. You run the offense through Griezmann. That, that's, that's simple. Simon doesn't have to really say anything to his midfielders. He just says, give the ball to Griezmann, and uh, let's just see what happens. It's that simple. He is one of the best attacking midfielders over the last decade, not just this season, but over the last 10 years. Griezmann's so underrated, so talented, and finding that forward pass. I believe at the end of December, out of the top five leagues in Europe, Antoine Griezmann had the most completed forward passes. Oh, wow. Wow. So yeah, he's, he's elite when it comes to creating offensive chances off the pass. 11 goals, 6 assists in 24 games in La Liga. 5 goals in the Champions League as well. Joint top score, surprisingly, man. Mm -hmm. Atletico Madrid is in 4th place right now. If Griezmann didn't exist, where would they be? Oh, no. <laughs> I, 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 honestly, Seven? I don't know. Now, we, we'd still be up high because instead of trying to play free-flowing offense, we would mm. just double down on defense, mm -hmm. right? So I think we'd still be like what third or okay. fourth place, but we'd be looking a lot more depressing offensively. <laughs> that's for sure. That's for sure. Next up, we have Bukayo Saka. Arsenal's very own Bukayo Saka with 12 goals and 7 assists in 24 Premier League games so far. Three goals and four assists in the Champions League. I mean, if you're a person that loves numbers, this is the guy to support because his goals and assists contributions are just so nice to look at, yeah. man. I mean, a great season last yeah. year as well mm -hmm. and starting to ramp it up too with, I think, a, a brace this past weekend for Arsenal. Saka is elevating his game once again and just proving to be one of the best wingers in world football. Yeah, we said it, I think, uh, sometime at the beginning of the Premier League season. There's an argument to be made that Saka's been 
the best right winger out of Mohamed Salah okay, over the last chill. like three I don't think years. We had that argument, but no, all right. no, it's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. His numbers are ridiculous. There. Nineteen goal contributions just in the Premier League this season, and there's there was contention that he was having a slow start to the season as well but he's already got 19 yeah. goal contributions man yeah. there's a third of the season left to be played Saka's numbers are just ridiculous he's so deadly off the dribble he's you know the Vinicius of the Premier League essentially yeah. He's, yeah. Rid- he's so deadly when it comes to dribble penetration and what's what's crazy to think about him and the rest of the season I mean if Arsenal you know wins a title here uh, in the Prem but then also makes a deep run in the Champions League like he could find himself at the very top man or at oh least yeah like, no no yeah you know? absolutely Absolutely. He, could, he has a potential for himself with yeah. the way he's playing right now. So keep an eye on Saka because these next few months are going to be so important for him in this, you know, mountain race, but then also just the Ballon d'Or with the numbers he's putting up. And speaking of the Ballon d'Or and players that are just so, so good, let's just go on to one of the best, if not the best, defensive mid- midfielder in world football right now. The Champions League game-winning goal-scoring player, Rodri, Manchester City's very own ex atleti Rodri, mm-hmm. who has what? How much? What does he have? <laughs> he, has, he, has <laughs> six, he has six goals and three assists in 21 matches as a defensive midfielder. Yeah. Third in the Premier League right now with the game in hand, but just easily the best one in the world, the best player in his position in the world, and just such a vital piece to this new era of Manchester City that they've been ushering in for the past couple of years. He is the guy for him, and I think he does have an argument for being their best player, if you'd like, because he is so consistent, but then having that extra added touch of being very good on the ball and offensive and being able to actually score goals, that's rare from players of this position, and that's what I think separates Rodri from guys like Rice and many others. Exactly. You know, Gundogan was a central midfielder who scored a lot of goals for Manchester City. Obviously, his his starting position was more advanced on the pitch. Rodri has taken up that goal contributions that Gundogan did for Manchester City, but from a more deeper position, Mm -hmm. which is pretty ridiculous when you think about it. And when you look at his style of play, he's like the apparent heir to Sergio Busquets, essentially. A lot of his play isn't flashy, but it's so effective. He's probably the first player that Pep Guardiola puts on his starting 11 every single weekend. No, yeah, well said, well said. And paired up alongside him, I actually have Erling Holland. And here's why I have him in this position so right here. One, two, three. We have three four, more five, rows to go. Six players left. Yes. Holland's not a top six player, not is what you're telling me. Not a top six player so far, which is pretty crazy to 16 think 16 goals in the Prem. Mm-hmm. Top goal scorer so far. Mm-hmm. 16 and five in the Prem. So okay. Let's not forget that. In 19 games. So top it. joint goal scorer in the Champions League. One assist as well, <laughs> if you want to throw that in there. Okay. I just think it's I just think it's very it's very tied up top, man. It's very tied I up top. It really but is. I just think you gotta have a little bit more respect. You think so, man? Because I think it, so. It's pretty crazy. People do. I, I will say, I, I, he's not receiving the same hype this year as he did last year. But it's because well, there's no way he could. But even last year, like, uh, he's not that far off from it. 16 goals in 19 games is ridiculous in the Prem. And he's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, the yeah. leading scorer in the league. Yeah. Like, I'm kind of arguing against myself here. That's what I'm saying is that you, I, I agree. And I'm open to he, this. He hasn't even been that hyped this season, and he's still leading the charts. Mm-hmm. That's scary because that yeah. means people think he could reach a higher level, and a higher level means he'd be the best striker the Premier League has ever seen. Yeah. You know, so that's all I'm I saying. Just, I, okay, fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. But I think when you look at the, the players I have up top, you look at the numbers, I think they have higher numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they are having a stronger impact or at least responsibility for their team because what we've already mentioned like four Manchester City players so far it's a little tough to shine we have such good talent around you where some of the guys I'll bring up might be more individualistic oh absolutely so keep an eye on that but still it is early it's February he could be at the very top by the end of the season let's move on now let's see what that fifth tier has in store for us reminder this will only have three players now three players as we get closer and closer to the top the third tier reveal it now for me producer Red we have Harry Kane, Phil Foden, and Lautaro Martinez. Let's start with Harry Kane, a player that currently has 25 goals and 5 assists in 22 matches solely in the Bundesliga. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You want to look at the Champions League? 4 goals and 3 assists as well. Playing for Germany's second best team, which is crazy to say. <laughs> But also just having an incredible responsibility offensively and showing up for it when he is being given the service and when he's utilized correctly. He is standing out like no other in the Bundesliga. 
nearly breaking Holland's records that he set himself for Dortmund in the Bundesliga, Kane is now one of the best players we've seen so far, and he's challenging Lewandowski for his domestic records that he has in place. So Harry Kane is having a, a, a wondrous season that I hope results in some sort of silverware. But just from an individual point of view, I think Kane has done everything in his power that he can do himself. Everything else, I think, is on his team. And so for that reason, I, I'm giving him this high of a ranking because the numbers are incredible mm -hmm. and he's maxing, out, he's maxing out his potential. No, I like that. I mean, you look at Kane, Lautaro Martinez, strikers over Holland. I say right now, right now, yeah, I'd put them above Holland. I would. Yeah. I would. It makes sense numbers wise. Now, if Holland ends up winning another Premier League, goes far oh, in the yeah. Champions League, Kane gets out a little early. I think even with like thirty-five goals for Kane, I'd still put Holland above yeah. him. But that's at the end of the season, right? That's not. That's <laughs> not right now. So yeah, I'm, I'm cool with this. Kane's numbers are ridiculous, and I'm glad he's actually fulfilling what a lot of people thought he would. Yeah. He was dominant in the best league in the world so it only makes sense that he's even more so in the bundesliga yeah man it, i hope he gets some silverware man i really do because he <laughs> he is in the ballon d'or race man he really is i mean he should be he just needs a ridiculous number it, one of the best strikers over the last like what six years mm -hmm. it's been harry mm -hmm. kane here we go now the man that we were waiting for the man that we were hoping would be on this mountain and easily my favorite player for manchester city this year Phil Foden Phil makes, Foden. makes the mountain. He makes the mountain here. Just a couple tiers away from being the best player in the world so far this season. Phil Foden, in my opinion, has been Manchester City's best player so far mm -hmm. with the numbers he's putting up. Let's look at him. Eight goals, seven assists in 24 matches, four goals and three assists in Champions League matches as well. For me, the thing about Phil Foden that just stands out so much is the importance of his goals, man. This dude strikes when they're up against it, man. When they're up oh, against yeah. it and they need a player to step up, it always seems to be Phil Foden, bro. He did it just this past week, I believe, when they were down 1-0 to Brentford, goes on to score a hat-trick and steps up for the Manchester City team offensively. If you remember back in the Champions League when they were down 2-0 to Leipzig at home, it was Phil Foden who stepped up with a beautiful assist and then getting a goal as well to just lead that charge and that comeback and a moment of pressure for Manchester City. His style of play has been huge in the absence of Kevin De Bruyne and just the role that he plays, I think, has been so good. One of the best youngsters already in world football, elevating his game once again, having the best season of his career so far. Yeah. I think the argument is there to have Phil Foden this high up in the mountain, and I'm really happy about it because he easily is one of my favorite players for his Manchester City side. Yeah, and I think that's why I'm completely okay with him being this high. He has been, I say, the most consistent performer offensively for Manchester City this season. But as you said, it's the weight in which he gets these goals. They're in really big moments. And you couple the insane talent that he has on the ball. It's kind of ridiculous. This is easily Foden's best season. I think he's pretty much already matched his previous best season. Yeah. And there's still a third of the season left to yeah. be played. So he's going to crash his previous numbers this season. Phil Foden has been immense for Manchester City. Yes, dude. Here is a really interesting one. We have Lautaro Martinez next up to these two really big names in Kane and Foden. Lautaro Martinez, man. And here's the thing. Here's the argument for Lautaro Martinez because I really was surprised when I looked at his numbers and just where he's at right now. Dude, they're insane. When you think about it, he already has completed his season. 20 goals in Serie A so far, two assists as well in 22 games, two goals in the Champions League as well. But the thing is, Inter has such a comfortable lead up top of Serie A. They basically already won it, man. Yeah. And it's thanks to his offensive efforts, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm almost looking at this from like, I don't know if he can get any higher here unless he goes on a deep run in the Champions League, but the fact that they've done it already in the Serie A and that they've been such a dominant team thanks to his offensive contributions, the numbers are crazy. They're there to back him up. Lautaro deserves to be up here, man. He really does. And yeah, it's something that shocks me because when I was doing my research, I knew he was having a really good season, but I didn't realize it was this good, man. He's, Dude. he's topping the incredible seasons he's had in the past already in Serie A yeah. and he's doing it for the best team in the league now so yeah. just an incredible season so far and merited man absolute credit to Lautaro Martinez yeah I think where Martinez is right now for Inter Milan is like the definition of a player gelling with a side like he's just not even questioning what he's doing on the pitch and it's working every single time he's averaging basically a goal a game yeah which is ridiculous in uh, Italy and I just think it makes sense for Lautaro to be this high. You can't score 20 goals yeah. in, what, 21, 22 matches yeah. and not be this high on the mountain. It just makes complete sense. His finishing is ridiculous. And like I said, right now, his role that he has for Inter Milan, it's it's just picture perfect. Yeah. 
everything runs through him when it comes to service from him. And when you have the players that Inter Milan have behind him, Mkhitaryan, Chalhanoglu, Di Marco out mm -hmm. wide, they are there to service Martinez. And then you also have a really interesting striking partner, Turam, who isn't like Lukaku, who also looks for goal. He's a little bit more selfless. So I think that just adds to Martinez scoring more and more goals. That's true. Turam with seven assists this year. Right. So yeah, I think it does show. Yeah. It does show. I'm just, I'm impressed, man. I hope that, you know, given his performance in the 2022 FIFA World Cup, people kind of forgot about Lautaro because he was so off that tournament. But he's yeah, had a resurgence weird. here. There's a little bit of a resurgence here that I think, or at least I hope, ends up just building his momentum and, you know, maybe making a deep Champions League run once again with this team. Unfortunately, they have to play Atletico in the round of 16, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll That's see. why you're not considering, huh? <laughs> you're not considering. Here we go. Here we go. Well, with that uh, same team bias, this next year will be really interesting for a lot of folks because we have two players now, three players in total to reveal, but the next tier only has two players. It's the sixth tier now, the mountain. I mean, these are the best. These are the best of the best. Yeah. Who is up top? Who is the leading the charge for the best players so far this season? Let's find out it's none other than Kylian Mbappé and Mohamed Salah and allow me here to defend these selections to start oh, off please. we have Kylian Mbappé the Frenchman we just went off on Lautaro for 20 goals in Serie A well Kylian Mbappé has 21 goals in 20 League One matches as well as four assists too mm -hmm. four goals in the Champions League Six goals and three assists in the Coupe de France. I believe if you look at all the goal contributions so far within all competitions, Mbappe is leading the charge in that category. So his goal scoring prowess has not slowed down one bit. It's only gotten better amongst a really interesting PSG side that is, you know, welcoming more French players and more mm. young players as well with mm. Vitinha, Zaire Emery in the midfield, uh, Kola Mouani up front, Dembele being a part of the team, uh, Barcola as well. A really interesting PSG side, but still, regardless, Mbappe is the standout. He has the numbers to back it up. He's been scoring some really important goals for them, just scoring the Champions League matchup against Real Sociedad at home last week. I mean, it's looking good so far. This season is looking really good as a complete project, as a complete resume for Mbappe. He just needs that silverware now because they're going to win League One, but can he win the cup tournament? And then can he also win the Champions League or at least go deep because be, that's yeah. what he needs to be able to be at the very top as the leading guy for the Ballon d'Or race and the, and the leading guy for Reynoso Mountain as well. Incredible season though, man. Yeah, I mean, we just recently did a little, a little segment about Mbappe being the definitive League One GOAT. And honestly, and I know a lot of people hate hearing it, he's been like top three player from a skill set perspective since 2018. Like Mbappe's that guy. I just don't think there's really any argument to say he's not always at least a top five player at any yeah. given moment in time. So for him to be top three, I just think it makes sense. You add in the fact that he scored 21 goals already in the domestic league. Like life's easy for Mbappe out there, man. And <laughs> I, like you said, for him to excel even further, it's just always about a deep Champions League run or a deep World Cup run or a deep Euros run. And what's crazy is that so far he has a really good tracker track record in international play too. So Mbappe is just one of the best. Yeah, this is why I'm hoping that he's able to continue this pace he's at because... He ha he's never won the Ballon d'Or. And he's actually only ever had a top three finish once, I think, in his mm -hmm. career. I think for him to be able to go over to Real Madrid, because we know that's what's going to happen here, as he's announced he's going to leave PSG officially. Like going to Arsenal? You know, yeah, maybe, maybe Liverpool? I don't know. I don't know. But still, transitioning out of Ligue 1, I think it'd be, it's gonna be crazy. the best way to do it would be with a, a French award, the Ballon d'Or being given to him. <laughs> in a way that can only be done if he goes deep in the Champions League and he does something yeah. really important and really impressive. Right. I want to see him do it, man. And so I'm saying that here in February right now as we scope this whole year out. If Mbappe, you know, if he does that, bro, that just adds to his legacy, adds to his name. 25 years old, going to a new team with a Ballon d'Or under mm. his bag, dude. That'd be amazing, That'd be crazy. man. That'd be crazy. And he definitely has a shot this year with how he started so far. And then paired up with him, I have none other than my twin, my boy, my savior, Mohamed Salah. Liverpool's very own Mo Salah with 15 goals, 9 assists in the best league in the world, the Premier League. 24 goals and assist contributions. That's the highest in the Premier League so far. 
leading Liverpool to first place in the league as well above teams like Manchester City, teams like Arsenal, and doing all this despite not playing for Liverpool for an entire month. The numbers are ridiculous, and not just that, the impact. We saw it just this past weekend with Mo getting a goal and an assist in his return back off the bench for Liverpool, closing that game out against Brentford. I mean, the impact is just irrefutable, man. He's been so good for this team, and he's just continued his momentum. The numbers are so nice. And I'm just curious, man, am I being biased here by putting him up this high, or does he deserve that spot? I, I'm okay with this. What, you 24 goal 24. contributions? I think he leads the Prem in yes. that regard, which is insane. But it makes sense. Liverpool are having a almost renaissance type of season where they had such a mediocre one in the previous season, but now they're back. They're vying for the title. And in a title race that has the best Arsenal side maybe ever against definitively the best Manchester City side. I'm one of the best Premier League sides ever. And Liverpool are right there. Mm-hmm. They're right in that pack. Mm-hmm. And I think the guy, not necessarily behind it, but the guy that has always been there in every single game this season in some regard, it's Mohamed Salah. It is. It's pre- it is. Pre- which is crazy because it's old man Salah. He's 31, <laughs> dude. Yeah. He's 31. Yeah. And... You look at it, he averages, over the last like seven, eight years, he's averaged about 30 goal contributions. Obviously, he's had outliers where he gets like 40, Mm -hmm. but he's already at 24, and there's a third of the season left to be played. Like He's going to be hitting numbers that he hit when he was in his prime. This is ridiculous. Mohamed Salah is one of the best players in the Prem. I, I yeah. just think this, this makes sense. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, I think so too, man. I don't think I'm being biased here because the impact yeah. is just undeniable, man. And where he has Liverpool right now, like you said, renaissance season. It's so, so impressive. It's crazy. Liverpool is back. And I think a big part of that is because of the two guys I listed here, Van Dijk and Salah, man. Yeah. Playing like their vintage selves. It's time to reveal the top performer so far this season. The man that I think right now is the favorite for the Ballon d'Or if the season ended today. I mean, there's no need to build this up because I think it's pretty obvious to a lot of us. Producer Rudd, reveal it. We have Jude Bellingham as the lone man up top, stamping the flag up there and getting the best view so far of Reynoso Mountain, man. It's cold up there, but it's only because that's how cold he is on the pitch, man. It is lonely up there. It is lonely for this man who has 16 goals and three assists in 21 La Liga games. Unreal, man. man. Numbers that are comparable to CR7's debut season with Real Madrid. In a completely different position for this team. Four goals and three assists in the Champions League as well. It has been nothing but storybook for Jude Bellingham ever since he put on that Madrid jersey. Coming from Borussia Dortmund, their star signing, and he has done nothing but show out on the biggest of stages. Guiding Real Madrid to first place in La Liga and then also being a part of their Champions League side who is destined to be one of the favorites in this tournament. I mean, bro, it's Jude Bellingham. And the fact I think that I put him up here, the the reason I put him up here is because he's doing this under a spotlight so big, the biggest spotlight in the world when it comes to to club football. He's doing it in his debut season at 20 years old, good man. Lord, good Bellingham Lord. is good is Lord. nothing. It's, 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 it's so impressive, bro. It really is. We used to have those debates about Musiala, Bellingham, yeah, Gavi. Yeah, yeah, and I always yeah. defended my boy, man. I'm going to take credit for this one because I have seen, I, I had the foresight of seeing this man being able to achieve the things he's done so far. But I actually think he superseded them, man. He has been incredible. And I think he's the future of football in this position. Madrid has an absolute gift here, and he is the favorite. He's the favorite for the Ballon d'Or so far this year. Yeah, I don't disagree with this whatsoever. Bellingham has been incredible. And it's funny because I I knew Bellingham was going to have a field day in La Liga. Once he joined, I was like, oh, it's going to be easy for him. He dominated in the Bundesliga. He was excellent with Dortmund. His ball retrieval is just as good as an elite defensive midfielder, but he always coupled it with really good vision offensively. So immediately, if you watch Bellingham play, you're like, okay, this guy is one of a kind. He truly is a complete package in the center of the park. But what's crazy, man, is I don't think anybody could have predicted how many goals he scored. It's ridiculous. No. And that's why I think it makes sense that he's at the top because what he provides for you, for Real Madrid, is a complete X factor. You have no idea what he's going to give you on the pitch other than that he's going to be a threat. But what's crazy is that it's from a midfield position. I have never, and I mean never, seen a midfielder score the way Bellingham has. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of crazy. Yeah. 
Antoine Griezmann might be the next guy put up there with Bellingham, but Griezmann's different because he's yeah. kind of like a secondary forward, right? He's midfielder for sure, but more forward in the way he plays. Bellingham honestly could be a defensive midfielder if Ancelotti asked him to. It's kind of crazy. The amount of output you get from Bellingham, I just think it makes sense. You put him in the midfield, but he's going to score 20 goals a season? Are you kidding mm-hmm, me? Mm-hmm, like, that's mm-hmm. literally unheard of and has never happened in the game before. He's one of a kind, and the way the season is going right now, as you already said, he I think he is the best player right now. He gets a La Liga for Real Madrid, makes a deep run with him, too. I, I definitely he's going to be up there for the Ballon d'Or, for sure. Yeah, the only scary thing is that he is out for the next month. I know. Out for the next I month. Know. So that'll slow down his momentum just a Sucks. little bit. Luckily, he has done so much that if he just gets healthy once again, shows up for those important matches, he could pick up right where he left off. But he is injured right now, and that is worth noting. Yeah. Regardless, Real Madrid fans, man, you, you guys are spoiled. Spoiled with Bellingham being at the top, and then the second tier, potentially, Mbappe joining your team next season. It is ridiculous the talent that Real Madrid could Eesh. have. But Bellingham specifically, man, and, uh, I might rile up some Barca fans here, but I, I heard a little stat the other day where he's already matched the career number of goals that bet that he has for his entire career yeah. just solely with the single season that he has so far in La Liga. So that is pretty impressive. Bellingham, an incredible player and the leader so far and the best player so far mm-hmm. of this year. Guys, let me know what does your mountain look like? If you want to do just less tiers, that's perfectly fine, but I want to go look at the comments and I want to see what you guys say. If you disagree with any of my picks, if you want to debate any of them please feel free i'll be lurking in the comments and overall i really enjoy this process and we will be updating it once again rain no so mountain we will be updating it a couple months from now to see where these players stand and who's the favorite for this race yeah i would actually love to hear other people's opinions especially if you're european mm-hmm. you know i just want to know what you really think about this do you agree do you like strongly disagree but anybody please put your opinions in the comments i love reading them uh, just for you, for a little question, uh, no, 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 uh, Kieran Trippier, no Trippier, no Messi, no Ronaldo, no Messi also, yeah, yeah. no Messi also. That's inter- what, what, well, what was, what was starts, that thought process starts in like? August. This, to me, this starts in August when the Ballon d'Or that started that out, so there's barely any sense. soccer for him. And makes sense. Ronaldo, I think if anything has a bigger case because he has been playing during this, uh, time spam yeah, but for true. me i just rule it out because of the league right now Absolutely. he has to put up crazier numbers in my opinion to get on my radar but i'll keep an eye on him if he wins champions league afc champions league if he wins the domestic title then mm-hmm. he'll definitely maybe find a way up here bro cool thing about kieran trippier for newcastle newcastle had you know yeah not mediocre but just disappointing compared to last season but trippier leading the league in assists yeah unreal which is insane and if you think about it if he can just continue that, which I definitely think he could because none of the assists that he's getting is really from a fluke. It actually makes sense. Like He has gotten mm-hmm. progressively better as his career has gone on. Um, he's just so precise now with his delivery. He actually could end up being the top assist guy in the Premier League this season, which is kind of crazy. It's never been done before from a fullback position. It's never been done. But Trippier's getting pretty close. Uh, it's because he's a, he was an athletic guy. That's what's going on. Well, all I'm saying is that <laughs> all I'm saying is that Diego Simeone maybe unlocked something in him. Uh, you no, know, seriously. Yeah, if yeah. you look at his numbers, right. you look at his numbers pre atleti yeah. They're nowhere even close to what he no. started getting no. once he joined Atletico and then once he returned back to the. Dude, Premier. I think he had a game this year where he had he had a hat trick of assists. Yeah, bro. Like it's. It, I'll keep an eye on him. All Maybe saying, he gets on the mountain. Under the guidance of Diego Simeone, anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, maybe maybe, maybe not even on the mountain, but maybe he gets an honorable mention. Something, yeah. something. I think that's what makes this fun because a lot of these players, like, they can improve their stake. They, 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 they could. They could. Like, Griezmann can just double his numbers and he can find himself in the top three yeah. or Savio. Or, that's so true. You know, so it, uh, we need to update this. We'll have yeah. to update okay. this in the future. Guys, let it's us know in the comments. What do you think about this? Send me your own personal mountains. And we'll see you guys very soon. Peace.